horse has a hock injury or pathology like this horse has, you want to be aware that that horse may not be able to lift its limb very hard. It certainly isn't going to be able to bend it out. You're picking it up, give him a chance to relax, you feel him relaxing right there. I'm going to slowly take it back. And oftentimes the most comfortable spot is back behind the other limb. Now he's very stiff right there, no flexion. I'm going to keep it just as low as possible. With my hoof knife, I'm going to find a parameter at the point of the frog where we have uniform texture between sole and frog. And I'm finding it relatively quickly. Another thing you notice on his feet is all these pock marks. These pock marks are an indication that there's a fungal infection going on there. You want to be careful if you see horses with that because the fungus is generally eaten away the insensitive tissues. I'm just going to reach in here with the nippers and eliminate some of these bars. See this this bar has been fractured and that can create uh, some discomfort for the horse also. We'll try to give him some more stability to that corner so that doesn't get worse. collateral sulcus of the frog out. You can see the pock mark right there and you can smell that fungal activity. You see all these small pock marks. It's completely natural and it's not gotten so far where it's a detriment to the horse right now. So we'll just clean that up, get air to it. That's the best treatment right now. See how hard he's wearing on the lateral side of this hoof. We're limited to how much we can take off there. You can also see that there's a lot of flaring to the medial toe quarter. Them off, set them down, reevaluate. And when looking at that, I feel that the medial toe quarter, the inside toe quarter, is just a little high like yet. I'll go back and hit that again with the rasp. I use the nippers and get a more uniform wall thickness. And then take that foot forward and blend down to that parameter I've set on the solar surface.
I still feel that the medial wall is pushed up some, but from the solar surface I've gone as far as I'm comfortable with. When in doubt, don't. I'm afraid to go any further. I'm not going to. This is a causative factor from the horse's conformation. It's quite bull-legged now, and uh, I did the what I could to help him out, and will further help him out with the style of shoe that we put on. I'm going to trim at the point of the frog until I have uniform tissue texture, which I arrived at almost immediately here. It's an indication that I should be careful and not trim much sole off. Again, we have a fungal issue here that's invaded that sole. It's, for the most part, anaerobic, so if we expose it to the air, it will take care of it. I use the loop knife to tidy up the collateral sulcus. And we really don't have much hoof wall there to take off, so I'll just be using the rasp. Uniform wall thickness. Clean some more of the dirt out of here and debris. and set it down and reevaluate. You want to be considerate of the horse. This horse has a, a lack of flexion, has some lameness issues. Don't hold the horse up for a long time or expect him to flex in unusual positions. Do what you have to, do it as quickly as possible. Give the horse regular breaks and yourself regular breaks because working on a horse that's this stiff is also compromising those they're trying to hold his limb in a certain position. Keep the limb in natural range of motion. Keep it close to the ground. You may be putting your hoof stand at its lowest point to make them more comfortable. We took note of the huge hock and the the lack of flexion in his lower joints. We're going to try to put some of that flexion back into him via the shoe. We're using a Dura shoe, which is a rather thick shoe, and you get more mechanical action out of a thicker shoe. So what we want to do is we want to put some of the motion in the foot that's lost in the joints. We're going to do that with a thick shoe by rockering, rolling, or changing the brake over to where this horse breaks over. I'm straightening up the toe quarters, giving this shoe more of a hind foot shape. I'll bring it in. I'm 
sure to knock down the inside with the web so that I have no sole pressure on them. And before I do anything else, I'm going to heat up the toe and I'm going to give that an extensive roll. When we looked at his conformation, he's bow-legged, and then he goes down to the fetlock and goes in, passing joint, coffin joint goes out again. So the major deviation is in the hawk, plus he's got pathologies in the hawk that create lameness issues. But if we do too much on the hoof, as far as width of web, laterally, we're going to create problems in the coffin joint, passing joint, and fetlock joint to try to help out a hawk that's fused. So you want to be real conservative with what you do on a mature horse like this that's got such extensive pathologies. So I took that roll way back to the inside width of web, extended it way out there. I've just dressed this up so that we have a check there so that the dirt and debris can clean out. It's not building up in that hoof. The outside is tapered. It's tapered from inside to outside. We'll round that up even more with the hammer and the grinder. You don't want to get in a hurry when you're working on a horse like this that has deviations and has a difficult time flexing.
a horse that has arthritic lesions, you want to be aware of that. And when you set your nails down in, right about there when they're seated in, don't keep hitting on it because that vibration goes into the horse's limb and you can feel the discomfort, his will to pull that leg away at that point. Set that nail in. Some of these horses, they're more comfortable if you drive your nails with a urethane hammer. I'm trying to keep his limb low, and keep it in a range of motion that's comfortable for him. I'm trying to get my work done quickly and efficiently so that I don't hold his limb up for a long time. Remember this horse had a fetlock varus and then the pasture joint goes out again. You'll recognize those horses because when you're holding on to them, they're harder to hold on to. They slip out of your lap a lot easier.
This hoof in the heel area it curves in a lot more because of this hock injury. I'm not comfortable putting that last nail in, so I'll just leave it out. If in doubt, don't. I'll bend those nails out at a 90 degree angle using my clinchers upside down. I'll file them to the same length, square up the ends, and when you square up the ends, it allows your clinchers a better grip of them. Come under the nail at the same angle as the hoof wall, and just take some of the burr off. Using the clinchers right side up, I'm pushing the reins together, that pulls the nail down and pushes it in. Using the file, the smoother side again, I use the edge of the file. Brush over those clinches, make sure that they're smooth, no sharp edges. Because he is mature, lacks flexibility in these limbs, we've put on an SX roller motion shoe to allow him to break over in any direction. He's also fetlock varus, base narrow. I've added a crease in here to give him just a little more width laterally and decrease the width of web medially. Allows this side to sink in, this side to float in the soft arena ground. On the hind limb, I used a Dura shoe. This is a size odd. I have knocked it down to the outside because he has hock issues. You can especially see it here. It's fit to the parameter of the foot. I've decreased the width of the web, rolled it off good here because he's apt to interfere with his deviations, and rolled the toe from the inside with the web out to the outside with the web. Because the pathologies are severe, a thicker shoe will give you more mechanics out of that roller toe. And in time, one may want to go with even a thicker shoe or aluminum.